Well, hello everybody, welcome back to episode 134, my last play of Torment Tires of New Marine Red, however you say the name in the game. I'm Avatopia. Okay, we just came out of here, took the treasures and all that stuff from the balloon. I am very, very annoyed with it at the moment, but whatever. We still have the blade to slice and dice if it gets near us, or slice and dice it. It was theoretically inside its belly, in a way. That's weird. We got the thing we need. What is with you? Shut up. <laughs> Oh, I wonder if there's anything from that that he needs before we leave. Let me again go to jail and tell me what yeah. No. At last. At last. Because we can't really kill ourselves without dying in a fight right now. That thing on me what sucks. I don't know what that's doing. It's still on top of me. If you want a job done right. Look, it's like coming off me. Uh, without finding the drink thing, and we can't until we get the bloom. It's a plan. What do you mean with a plan? Hopefully, it'll have some kind of adverse effect on us. I'm thinking, what's her name might actually her? So we're going to go back there to hand this in, but I actually kind of want to yes. nip in here just now. to see if she says anything. No, we're not examining. You want to enter it? Look, it's down here. <laughs> okay, where is it? There it is. Fine. See if she says anything because this bloom taint on me or whatever it is. Anything new? Imagine I have more questions. I have more questions. How is Colty doing? Why is May I sleep here? Colty. Let's run a semi darkness. Well enough. The bright eyes fixed on the on the, the young man. The whispers like him. Oh yeah, I sent him here to work, didn't I? Oh that's probably him. No, the whispers like him. A faint aroma of murder, so flushed with a decade's worth of shame and a dash of innocence. They find him a pleasure. Milan's a perfume too precious to devour. Him and she's just my returns. He's also good with the laundry. <laughs> okay, let me talk to Cody. How do you do him? Forgot I sent you here. Cody wields a broom and wears strange new clothes. They don't suit him, but at least he isn't dead. He looks up. Hey, you come back? So, how do you like your new job? He shrugs, it's fine, I guess. I don't have to sleep on the streets so I'll steal food, my food. He leans lean and closer. But these people are weird, and Miss Speck watches me all the time. The folks who come in are even weirder. They don't smell good at all. So you don't like this job? Oh, you know where to go. You don't like this job? <laughs> oh no, it's fine. He glances quickly at the Speck, whose attention seems to be elsewhere for the moment. I mean, it's a job, right? I could. It could be worse. He takes a deep breath. It could be a lot worse. For, thank you, really. I mean, again, okay. How are you? You know, with the guilt. Cody looks at you, and you see the registration in his eyes again. I can't say it's gone. Some nights I lay awake for hours and scared of seeing her in my dreams. He shudders, then adds, But there's enough work that I don't have to think about it most days. Sometimes I even think I'll be alright. Nice. Yeah, see you then, Cody. Sure. So it was worth coming here for that then. I was hoping to be something more with her because the stink thing got me, but whatever. So unless, well, we still haven't leveled, so we're definitely strong enough to, to get the thing out of the ship. So I guess the only thing we do is in the here for now. And you know, if we do all this, and then we're still stuck. He's got to be with the ship, and there must be something I'm missing. But maybe the thing I'm missing is in from here. Don't know. Find out. And of course, it needs to be the mind for him. But at the moment, he's good as a hero. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Hand it to you. Then we'll talk to these. Don't like that coming from me. Is, the fray, is this the frame you're looking for? One quick glance at it, and apparently, all he needs. He yelps with delight, takes it from your hands and strokes the joints of the collapsed frame. He studies it carefully. It doesn't appear that the murders have damaged it extensively. It still seems to have that constant low hum of power and yes, yes, this will do nicely. He hands you a bag with an immense amount of shins, 350. Everyone gives you about 300, 350, so that is not immense, but okay, thank you. I need to talk to you. He grabs Alan's forearm, pull one of these halfway out. Alan, he keeps his other eye trained on the frame as Alan lifts a tattoo, hissing and buzzing from his skin. Orphan leans forward, licking his lips. Yes, he whispers, yes, yes. He grabs 
Alaran and kisses his friend full on him. Huh? We didn't just bring you some kind of sex toy, did we? Oh, what's that thing called? Um, a gimp outfit. That's the frame, you know, you know, with like the bunny ear thing, <laughs> you know, in the air. Open question mark, whatever you want to cast it as. My friend, I forbid you to use your tattoos anymore unless he pauses, clearly building for dramatic effect. What, unless he rams you in the back or something? Unless you enjoy throwing your family and friends. Huh? He beams. Throwing your family and... What? His mouth hangs slightly open and there is a sunken look to his eyes. What? Smash all disappears from his face. I thought this might be happier news for you, Alvin. Do you understand what I'm saying? Huh? Are you right? I, uh... Are you saying that I have been using my family and friends as weapons? What? I have been stealing their power to defend myself. Have I... Have I damaged them? He grabs Fang, uh, Fang's arms and rasps. How do I restore them to humanity? Well, yes. You have been using them like that. Which is why I suggested that you take special care with them. But you might not have suffered ill effects. I cannot say for sure. All you need to do is reactivate the frame and they will be restored to you. He scuffs the ground with his foot and mutters. We can evaluate that progress then. That progress then. Snatches the frame from over and snaps it out to its full expanse. He runs his fingers along the sides and agitates increasing by the moment. Agitation. Why is this not working, Over? Why is this not working? Perhaps it requires a special activation sequence, Elman? Change. Legacy has shifted. Blue tire rests small amount. Is that true, Oven? Could that be it? Hmm, perhaps. Yes, yeah, so if this device functions as a matter of decoherence and imprinting transfer, it would necessarily require a passcode of some sort to unlock it. It wouldn't do the ancient users any good if they accidentally re their passengers, would it? Uh, I would require an act of Internet and internet facility? What? What it? It would require that of uh, whatever. He taps his uh, lips thoughtfully. So, do you happen to know any extremely powerful psychic? Someone stronger than a mere mind reader? Is it? Is it my character that one of them might know how to unlock this code from your mind? Oh, sugar, from your mind. Murdens who we've kind of murdered might have been able to do that. I, I'm no student of the psychic arts, my friend. I have done for you uh, what I can, and frankly, I think my efforts have been su su sufficient. Okay. Probably I can do it if it's, it goes in my head. So basically, come ahead for both of these now. I'm assuming you mean me. Or else it's that member person we're trying to get to behind that big, you know, that big door back, back there somewhere. He considers. I might know just a person. She's back in South. The one who I have to pick you or him, isn't it? Yeah, sorry, you or her, and start. Once, we, once we're out in the bloom, and I'm done with the cask off business, I'll go find her. He wraps his arms around firm in sudden embrace, and his voice is husky. I'm forever in your debt. You have been sufficient, and more than sufficient. You have been heroic. I will, I will. Fringing waves in Barris' hand. You gave me a puzzle, Aaron. It was a delight. He frowns a little. Though, if you could explain to Min just how helpful I've been and tell him how I unlocked the secret none of them could, that would go a long way toward clearing this debt you mentioned. He fakes a cough, as if unused to display emotion. Well, my work is finished. I really must return to my position in the order. Farewell. Uh, at any rate, oh, that's too much. Let's go. Okay, nice. Let's go check out these now. A mass of bloom flash quivers on the table, picked at by humming machines. Every so often, one of them administrates an electrical shock to the flash, which responds with a scanty little whine. Hello? Why, good sir, greetings, greetings, and welcome to our little operation. His long face suffuses with a smile as his joke. His sagging skin and the dark bags under his eyes speak of a deep physical weariness, but his manner is bright and cheery. He wipes his nose on a filthy sleeve and extends his hand. My name is Dr. Dermory. I just realised, um, we did, uh, I forgot what we used, was it those fast fingers or something? To get that um, frame. We didn't go back and rest, so we probably should do that in a bit. Before we, especially if we go through that hole over there. 
his partner steps forward as well. I am Dr. Oberivik. He extends his hand. It's probably best to grasp the top one, like his partner. His face is long and seamed, unlike his partner. Each of his arms is belf... Belfagit? At the elbow, what that means. Oh, he has more stuff there. Oh, grab the top ones. He means this, not this. I can remember. Uh, like his partner's face, long seamed. With a mechanical forearm and hand grafted to them. A multitude of prosthetic eyes are drilled into the top of his head. But where are our manners? How can we help you? Do you know any way to restore the sight of someone without eyes? Oh yeah, that's a guy. Maybe they can help him. Tell me about yourselves or sort of uh, that's something. Without eyes? Were they destroyed? Or is this inherited? Was this creature that has no visual cortex? He waves his hands. It makes no matter. I can restore sight to any living creature. He leans forward and taps at your chest. Any. Rit is nodding and smiling and prepares to offer a boast himself. But as he holds up his strange arm, his index fingers in the air, he pauses and says quietly, Do you mean restoring sight and retaining independent nervous anatomy? That is, without sco without scooping out portions of the brain? Subject should retain her fetishes, yes. She is possessed for five. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. He paces a very small circle. I know only one procedure that meets that specific qualification. That she retained all her factories. I'm afraid it is long work. Long hard work. Long hard expensive work. Oh cruddy. All the money I've got he's going to take off me isn't it? But she says she'll give anything for it. The half man returns his uh, partner's quick look. It would require compensation worth more than coin. Oh god what. Perhaps if you found us an interesting test subject for the... Well, I already have it. For the investigation, we could consider a fair trade, and when I say perhaps and could, I actually mean that it would suffice. Expensive and time consuming, what about all the eyes your colleague has on his head? Did he undergo these surgeries one by one? <laughs> so do you need to interest the subject? My friend, these eyes provide a valuable function for me, and they are not simple baubles to my handed out, out to be put words, not simple baubles to be handed out as favours. They are affixed to me and provide certain insight. He bobs his uh, head quickly and nervously, and as if to belay his words, one of them falls from his head. Blast! He adds, hastily scooping it up and reattaching it. Wow, I guess that's all these up here. Very well, very well. You caught us in a slight embellishment, as one might expect from someone of uh, your mental capability. He looks to his comrade. Compatriot, sorry. Did I not tell you that our friend's intelligence was something to be admired? I did. He bows to you. We don't necessarily need a subject, I suppose, but I did not embroiden the truth entire. This is an expensive item to replace it. will cost us two donations. Okay, I'm going to mean three and replace each. That's fine. Patients, do you need for interest subject? Would I qualify as interest subject? Any of my companions serve as a good Let me see. I'll remember that. What the wind took. Uh, his head started bobbling up and down before you finished speaking. Oh yes, so very much, yes. We could be particularly interested in investigating this tattoo on your head. It seems reactive and strange. Then I'll tell myself. It is, but uh, let's talk more about your test subjects. So let me ask them. Why not? We have seen others with this kind of tattoo and have tried to recreate some of them. Some have been less than willing and we have had some unpleasant feedback loops from others. I'm delighted to know that you come to us, Van Taylor. Saves me money. The first order of business is an rejection. Your conscious swims and I just realized I probably should save this. When did I save it? After I get handed this stuff to him probably. Fudge. If it is, I'll just get through everything quick one and reload. The first order of business is an injection. Your consciousness swims into a dreamy health. And I'm also hoping to lose consciousness, go back into my mind to free him too, so. I'm hoping it will do that. Swims into a dreamy half haze. Objects taking on a luminous rainbow. Tinted beauty. A sense of great satisfaction fills you as a rush of pleasure through your veins. Even when Urban leans over you with a scalpel and begins to cut, you feel only a slight tugging and the bead of your blood stuck to the edge of the scalpel makes you want to weep for its transcendent beauty. Eventually you drift into darkness. Scott have permanently lost one health but no Crud. So that's what it cost me instead of money. Distant thunder summons you back to consciousness. Your eyes blink 
blurry open and you see Dumman's face peering into your own. You feel as through you have been torn open. Your mind stripped and something invaluable snatched away. A sense of loss prevails your being. I have to reload. You were a model client. Simply fantastic. I can also tell you with 90% certainty that almost all of your organs are back where they should be. Almost. He beams clearly proud of his work. Instantly, you completely impotent and will never be able to fire your What? Instantly, you're completely impotent and never be able to have any children. Uh, I hesitate to add that you were like that when we started. Okay, good. My character was like that, so you didn't ruin that. Ah, my good colleague. Has forgotten to tell you, but you may experience dizziness, nausea, some bleeding for a short time. Nothing to be concerned with. He clears his throat. We've uncovered some interesting facts about your tattoo, if you like to. It could be worth it for the facts. Bleeding. <laughs> Well, we did have to cut you open here and there. You volunteered, did you not? Now listen, it's important that you hear what we've discovered. Hopefully it's going to be worth it. Oh, guys, speak for us. A lot of help again next time. Maybe I can get the help back when I level. Tattoo is not really a tattoo. It's more like an anonymous gateway. A scan of living tissue that reacts to specific psychic vibrations, if I'm not mistaken. A specifically skilled individual might even be able to use this sky skins as an entry into your mind itself. Oh, okay. Ah, who's to say that there might not be someone already there already? Yeah, I think there is. He curses through his words sound more like someone who has never leaned, learned the hang of the business. We should have checked for that while we were in there. He turns to you. Perhaps you'll let us go back in and check for the any visitors, special voices or hallucinations. Regretfully, my friend, our client has fulfilled his part of the bargain. Furthermore, opening him up again would probably kill him, even despite... That remarkable regeneration ability he envisions. He looks at you, clearly expects you to leave. And um, before we carry on with this delightful conversation of them cutting me open and what was inside me, we are going to end this episode. So please like, please subscribe, please see you next time. And I hope you have a great wonderful day out there. If you haven't already, share this video, subscribe to the channel, and of course, make any comments and tips. See you next week and have a great wonderful day. Bye!